guys welcome back to tech dos and in this video we will look at the bitwise or of all the pairings problem which is from lead code number 2425 let's now read the problem statement in this problem you are given two zero indexed arrays nums1 and nums2 consisting of non-negative integers there exists another array nums3 which contains the bitwise or of all the pairings of the integer between the nums1 and nums2 Every integer in nums1 is paired with every integer in nums2 exactly one time. We need to return the bitwise ZOR of all the integers in nums3. Before looking at an example, let's first understand the constraint of the problem. So in this case, all the numbers are within the integer range. And also uh, the first array and the second array is having a maximum size of 10 to the power of 5. So you cannot write an MN algorithm where M is the size of the first array and is the size of the second array because they both can be 10 to the power 5 size and if you multiply them then it can go to 10 to the power of 10 size which is way beyond your 10 to the power of 8 and you know that we should always solve within 10 to the power 8 to be able to submit within one second. So we need to solve something which is better than MN algorithm or you can say better than N square algorithm. Now let's look at an example. In this case, uh, let's say that our array 1 is having 1, 2. We have two elements and array 2 is having three elements, 3, 4, 5. Now the number of pairs that we can form is the size of the first array that is 2 and the size of the second array that is 3 and we can form six pairs. So our step 1 according to the problem statement is take the first array, this is 1 and this is 2. Take the second array which is 3, 4 and 5. And now uh, we have to uh, find out all the ZOR pairings. So you take the first item of the first array and pair it with the first item of the second array. And then you pair it with the second item and third item. So if you pair them all, you will be getting 2, 5, 4. And if you take the second item of the first array and pair them with all the items of the second array, then you will be getting 1, 6, 7. So this is step number 1 where you find all the ZOR pairings between array 1 and array 2. Once you have done that, you will get uh, six such items. You need to find out the ZOR between all these items. Okay. So you know the property of ZOR that if a set bit occurs odd number of times, we have to keep it as set bit. And if the set bit occurs even number of times, then it will be zero. So in the first bit position, you will see that the one is occurring three times and therefore it is set as one. And in the second bit position, it is again occurring three times, which is odd. Therefore, we have to make it one. And in the third bit position, this one is occurring four times and therefore it will be set to zero. So the result will be one if the one occurs odd number of times, right? So if you do the simulation approach, we have already seen that it is going to give you order of MN complexity, which is the brute force approach. And this will give you a TLE. So we cannot go ahead with this approach in order to solve it optimally. Let's look at some idea. Now, in this case, let's assume that array A1 is having A comma B and array A2 is having C comma D. Now, if you follow step one, then we need to find out all the ZOR pairs from every item in A1 with every item in A2. So if you create pair of A, then it will be A ZOR C and A ZOR D. Again, the pair of B will be B ZOR C and B ZOR D. Now, if you think about it, then each of these A will be occurring exactly the size of A two times. A is occurring two times here in A ZOR C and A ZOR D, right? Why? because the size of A2 is 2. If the size of A2 was let's say 3 with some item X, then A will be zored with 3 items and A will be present 3 times here, okay? So how many times A will be present will depend on the size of A2. And similarly, the number of times B are present will also depend on the size of A2. So in this particular case, if you follow the step 2 after having created all zor pairs, then if you zor them together, then you will see that A occurring two times it will cancel out to the value zero and again b occurring two times it will be cancelling out to value zero right similarly this uh, c is present two times because it will depend on the size of a1 if a1 is having two items c will be zored with a and c will be zored with b now if a1 had three items then c would have been present three times so the number of times c and d are present that means the number of times elements of a2 are present it will depend on the size of a1 okay so in this particular case c is present two times so c and c will get cancelled out and d and d will get cancelled out so everything gets cancelled out and therefore the result will be zero right 
So if the A2 size is even length, then all the A1 elements will be zored even number of times. And therefore in step two, when you zor all the pairs, then they will definitely be getting the value zero by canceling out each other. So if let's say A1 size is even length, then A2's elements will all be canceled out because they will be present even number of times. And again, when you do the zor, they will get canceled out. And if A2's length is even, then all the elements of A1 will be occurring even number of times. And therefore, in step number two, they will get cancelled out. This is step number two, right? Okay. So in the even even case, when A1 and A2 are of even length, the answer will always be zero. Now let's look at the next case where A1 is of even length and A2 is of odd length. Now you can figure out that all the elements of A1 will be occurring odd number of times because the length of A2 is odd. So A and B will be occurring three times here. You see A is occurring three times and also B will be occurring three times. But what about the elements of A2? Now if you look at A1, the size of A1 is even. So since it is even, all the elements of A2 will be occurring even number of times. So C will be occurring two times, D will be occurring two times and E will be occurring two times. So in step one, when you find all the pairs uh, by doing the ZOR, then all the elements of A1 will be occurring odd number of times and all the elements of A2 will be occurring even number of times. So when you do ZOR in between them in step two to get to the result, then those elements which are occurring even number of times, they will all get cancelled out. So C, D and E will all get cancelled out and A will be ZOR'd odd number of times and similarly B will be zord odd number of times. So A and B will be retained and the result will be A's or B. Okay. So it all depends on the size of A1 and A2. Now this case is same if you consider A1 to be of odd length and A2 to be even length. Both even odd and odd even cases are same, right? Now let's look at the third case which is the odd odd case. So I have taken a very simple example. In this case, A1 is having one item, A2 is having exactly one item. So in step one, since A2 is of odd length, so all the elements of A1, here we have just one element, which will be occurring odd number of times. And yes, it is occurring odd number of times. And since A1 is of odd length as well, so all the elements of A2 will be occurring odd number of times. And yes, it is occurring odd number of times. So since in step one, due to A1 and A2 being odd number uh, size, all the items are occurring in odd count. And after this, when you take the ZOR in between all these pairs, then you will always get every item retained in the ZOR value. So you will get A or B. So both the A1 and A2 elements are retained since both are of odd length. So I think you can figure out that it all depends on the size of A1 and A2. What will be the final answer, right? We don't need to actually do the simulation process. So let's see a dry run for our solution. Now in this case, I have taken A1 to be of even length and A2 to be of odd length. Now I have to find out if the elements will be contributing to the final answer. So will the elements of A1 contribute to the final answer? Well, it depends on the size of A2. So since size of A2 is odd, therefore two and four will be present in the final answer. So what I will do is I will take an answer equals to zero and I will iterate through all the items of A1. Since it will be contributing to the final answer, I will be finding the ZOR between them. So if you take the ZOR, it will be equals to six because the two is zero one zero and the four is one zero zero. And if you take the ZOR, it will be one one zero, which is number six. So that is why I've written number six. Now having iterated through all the items of A1, now I need to check if I need to uh, iterate through all the items of A2, the items of A2 will only contribute if the size of A1 is odd. But here the size of A1 is even. Therefore, every item will occur even number of times. And in the second uh, ZOR operation, every one will get cancelled out. So we will just skip all these items of A2. And therefore, the final result will be 6 for this particular given example. If A1 was also of odd length, like let's say it had uh, three items, then I will iterate again for all the elements of A2 and I will zor it with the answer and say that I will be zoring one, five and four and then I will arrive to the final result, okay? But in this case, A1 is of even length. So we will not do that. So we will include the zor of elements if the other array size is odd. Otherwise, if it is even, we will just skip it.
so this is all about the entire approach and i hope this is very simple so the time complexity is we are iterating through the first array and the second array in the worst case so it will be the size of first array plus second array which is m plus n and the space complexity is order of one because we are not taking any extra space so let's now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this problem we are given two array nums1 and nums2 so i will be taking an answer initialized to zero which will be uh, finding out the final zord value now I will be checking what is the size of nums2 that is the second array if it comes out to be odd then I will be including all the items of the first array and zor it into our answer and the same thing will be repeated I will be finding if the second array will contribute to the answer that will depend on the first array size if the first array size is odd then I will include all the items of the second array because they will be contributing right so I will be just doing answer uh, zord with the given element of the second array and finally i will be returning the answer so i hope you were able to understand this entire solution if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you